The Applied Energy Lab is a uh, classroom slash laboratory space for undergraduate and graduate students. Uh, we're primarily interested in energy systems. We're busy, I'd say, up to 20 hours a week with repetitive lab experiments looking at basic thermal systems. If you're pursuing something like the solar decathlon where you need a meeting place for lots of students with computers and tables, it's a convenient place for that. Or when we're working on the project now for utility scale solar at Purdue, this is a good focal point for that. This is the nerve center behind most of the buildings on campus. So there's a computer program that's monitoring temperature, pressure, flow, energy consumption, anything you want to monitor in terms of a building. Buildings are computer controlled to a much higher extent than most people realize. The system here is the inside infrastructure for the solar systems that exist on the roof. We've got some of the electrical infrastructure for the solar photovoltaic system. Then in parallel to that is a solar thermal system that generates heat that could be used to heat water or a building. So very similar to what you saw inside the lab, more automation. If you're going to monitor the performance of something, you need a building control platform. This is all integrated with the rest of that building system. So we're measuring outdoor temperature, outdoor humidity, the amount of sunlight, wind speed, anything you can imagine related to uh, the performance of a solar energy array. This back row here is solar thermal systems. We've got systems that heat glycol, so you could be uh, generating hot water, for example. We've got other systems that heat air if you wanted to heat a building directly. Most of the solar thermal systems are not particularly high tech. They're flat plate collectors that, to be quite honest, have been here for, I'd say, at least 30 years. The system to the right is an, an example of a newer solar thermal technology using a device called a heat pipe, which is significantly more efficient. It's able to move thermal energy much more efficiently so you can capture more energy with about the same footprint. Then what we've got here is an example of a solar photovoltaic system. In one form or another, this has been up on the roof for more than 10 years. This is a relatively small though. It's a three kilowatt system. Very good for teaching students in, a, in one location to have students understand there's solar thermal systems and what their limitations are, solar PV systems and what their strengths and weaknesses are as well. But you see we've got more rail space. We could easily expand that. What you really want is the economies of scale. So a place like the airport, that's an ideal location to have acres of solar panels to be generating 200 times as much power as this is what we're going to be targeting. The environmental chamber here, and this is where testing on the bio wall is being conducted. But we'll be uh, developing a commercial scale version of the bio wall soon. This prototype bio wall plants and a growth media and air flowing through it. Everybody understands the photosynthetic process where CO2 and light allow plants to uh, give off oxygen. That's an, one manner of air cleaning. What's less commonly exploited is the root structures of plants host a microbial community those microbes are able to break down volatile organic compounds which can be pollutants in the indoor air environment. So what we're really doing here is bringing air and passing it past the leaves but actually through a loosely packed soil so that the air is interacting with the, the microbial environment here and we're testing on its efficacy as a living uh, air filter. Within the next year, we hope to move this technology out into a, a commercial building nearby campus.